Hello, and welcome to part four of my enemy NPC tutorial. For part four, we are working with respawn logic for our enemy. Currently, our enemy, when he dies, he just kind of crumbles and he never respawns, so he's just dead forever. And that's not normal in a game. Usually the enemy respawns, so today's tutorial is all about the respawn logic. So the first thing I am going to do is just go into the game and just get a little overview of what we've done in the past parts. So in the last part, part three, we added animations to our enemy NPC. And as you can see, he's walking, um, attacking. And when I get farther away, just kind of stands there, has an idle animation. So we're going to want to create a spawner and be able to set settings like how long it takes for them to respawn. And the first thing I'm actually going to do is go into the server storage and add insert an object and I'm going to insert a folder and I'm going to rename this folder to enemies or enemy enemy and we're that's where we're going to place all of the enemies within this game so this dummy would be an example of an enemy in a game so we're going to go put that into the server storage and he should disappear he's not in the workspace anymore so he's not visible so now that we have our dummy in the enemy folder what we're going to do is actually just create a part. So I'm going to click this button here to add a part. And this adds just a random part into the workspace. And I'm just going to make this into a square using the resize tool. And now we've got a cube. And this is going to be our spawner. So I'm going to rename this part to be a uh, spawner. And I'm going to move it up a little bit because this is where the enemy is going to spawn, so you don't want him to spawn in the ground. So just raise it up a little bit. I'm going to anchor it, make sure you anchor it so it stays in the air. And I'm also going to make it just a little bit transparent. When the game is, like, if you were to release the game, you would make these completely transparent. But just for debugging purposes, we're going to keep it transparent so we can see where it is. So now that we have our spawner, we're going to go into the properties tab um, and we're going to go to the bottom and add an attribute. My activate windows is in the way, ignore that. I just don't want to pay windows money for a license. Uh, we're going to add an attribute. We're going to actually add two attributes. The first one is going to be enemy. So the name, enemy name. And that's just going to specify which enemy we're wanting to spawn. I'm creating the logic so then if you have different enemies, not just our dummy, that it can specify which one you want to spawn. So in an example game, we'd have multiple different types of enemies within this enemy folder. So that enemy name attribute is just going to specify which enemy we're wanting to spawn. And we're going to create another attribute which is going to be a number attribute, and that's going to be respawn time. So as the name suggests, it's just going to be how long it takes for the enemy to respawn when he dies, when they die. Respawn um, time. And for just to start it out, let's just set the respawn time to three. The enemy name is just going to be dummy, um, because that's the name of our enemy. And so that's all we're going to do with the object within the properties tab. The next thing we got to do is add a script to the spawner. So we're going to right click it, insert object and add a script. This is going to have the respawn logic. So I'm going to create a function called spawn, um, spawn enemy. And now we're just going to create some local variables real quick. So the first thing we should do is create a local variable of the spawner part itself. Um, so spawner, and that's just going to be script.parent because it's the parent of the script we're working with right now. The next thing we're going to want to do is pull those attributes that we got from bef uh, that we created before. So respawn time. And that's going to be equal to spawner get attribute respawn time. I want to make this lowercase just so it follows suit with my other local variables. And then the other one, the other attribute we need to pull to a local variable is uh, enemy name. And we'll rename that appropriately. So now we have our two attributes into the script that we set in the attributes on the property um, page. So the next thing we're going to want to do is 
get the actual model of the enemy because right now we only have the name we don't actually have the enemy model so let's pull that into a local variable and that's just going to be called enemy and that is going to be equal to we have our enemies folder in the server storage here so game dot server storage and we're going to pull well nope we got to access the enemies folder and then we're going to index uh whatever enemy we get here from the enemy name so index enemy name and that should pull the enemy from that folder make sure that you have the right enemy name otherwise this line might error if the enemy doesn't exist in the folder or you might have just misspelled the, the enemy's name um, within the attribute so make sure that's correct but this should have if everything's correct this should pull the enemy model. And now we're just going to set a, a nil variable, or it's going to be set nil first, but it's going to be called uh, spawned enemy. So this is going to be the enemy that has been spawned. But at first, we don't have an enemy that's been spawned. So it's going to be set to nil. And now we're going to work with this uh, spawn enemy function. And this is going to actually spawn the enemy uh or to be honest first we should do a uh, despawn enemy as a function as well so to despawn the enemy we this is where the enemy is going to be located as a variable so i'm going to type check it and make sure roblox knows that this is a model that i'm working with here so first i'm going to check to see if there is a spawned enemy so if spawned enemy which will return true if it's not nil then and this will run which we will do spawned enemy destroy and just to touch things up we're also going to do spawned enemy equals nil so that if we run this function it will despawn it will destroy the enemy model and it will not error even if there isn't an enemy already spawned because it it won't run any code if there isn't a spawned enemy with this if statement here so now we can start working with the spawned enemy function which when we spawn an enemy we're always going to despawn um, our enemy if there is one so all we have to do first is call the despawn enemy we're just going to call this just in case there is an enemy existing and they could be dead the enemy still exists even when dead it just might not be despawned yet so after we have despawn enemy we're going to actually spawn the model so our model is this enemy so this is the one that is located in the folder currently we're going to want to clone it so we don't actually manipulate the one that's in the folder so let's first create the clone um, this is going to be cloned enemy and that is going to be equal to enemy uh, clone. I'm going to also type check this to let Roblox know that this should be an enemy as well. And so I'm going to do enemy clone. And now we have our cloned enemy and we're going to set it to the workspace. So the, it's parent to the workspace. So then we can actually see it. And that spawns the enemy. Something that I forgot to do actually is before we set it to the workspace, we also need to set the variable spawned enemy to our cloned enemy. So spawned enemy, our variable that we set to nil initially, is now equal to this cloned one that we just created because this is what we're going to spawn. And then we set it to the parent to workspace and it should show up. So we have our spawn logic now, but now we need to create the logic that actually does the despawning, spawning, and um, specifically waiting for the enemy to die so then it can um, start the logic to respawn it. To do this, we're actually going to create a while true loop. You might be confused why we put true here. It's just so that this runs forever and never leaves this um, loop. We're not going to ever need anything else in this loop and it needs to run forever so a while true loop is okay to do here and the first thing we're going to want to do is spawn our enemy so we're going to run the spawn enemy function here so this will spawn our enemy uh let's just uh 
Yeah, so then that's going to set the spawned enemy variable here. And we're just going to get its humanoid. So local humanoid, which I'm going to type check to let Roblox know we're working with a humanoid object here, is equal to spawned enemy. Wait, I just realized I made a mistake here. Instead of spawned enemy, this should be spawn enemy. I, I probably made the variables too close of a name to each other. That might be a little bit confusing. Um, but just remember that we have the spawn enemy function and then we have the spawned enemy model variable. Um, you might want to change that, but I'm going to continue with it. So the local humanoid is equal to spawned enemy, the model. Uh, wait for child humanoid. So we're waiting for the humanoid to load just in case. And when it finds it, it will set it to this variable. We're going to want to wait now for the humanoid to die. And good thing for us, the humanoid has an event inside called died. And it fires when the humanoid dies. It's perfect for this scenario. And instead of like connecting a function like we normally do, we are going to call wait. And this is just going to yield this uh, thread until this uh, the died function runs or fires. So now that we know the humanoid has died, we're going to want to uh, wait, task.wait for efficiency. And we're gonna wait until the respawn time has elapsed. So it can be as short or as long as you want. Um, our example was it will wait three seconds after it dies before it respawns. And now what we're going to want to do is just, uh, well, actually we don't have to do anything. It's going to loop and spawn the enemy again and wait for it to die. Wait the length amount of time it un after it died and then spawn again. So we've got the respawn logic all here. If there's no errors, that should be the completed respawn logic so let's go into the game and just make sure first of all that it spawns correctly the first time and look at that it did however you might have noticed it's not spawned where this the cube is and that is because i forgot uh to add a line of code into our spawner script because let me take the dummy out real quick and put him into the workspace if you see where he is, that's exactly where he spawned before. And that's just because that's where his position is in the game. And so it's not actually taking in consideration where the position of the spawner is to spawn the dummy. So to do that, when we spawn the enemy, before we parent it to the workspace, we're just going to do spawned enemy dot humanoid, uh, yeah, humanoid root part. And we're going to set the C frame, which is a way to set its location. We're going to set that to spawner dot C frame. And before we test that out, there's another thing that I forgot to do, and it was to turn can collide off of the spawner block. So uh, you can actually go through it. Um, we don't want an invisible block in places in the game. That'd be very annoying to the player. So now when we play the game, he spawns right where he should. And now we should test to see if we kill our dummy or our enemy NPC, will he respawn? I don't have any tools on me currently to do that. This game, I haven't done any tutorials on weapons yet. However, it's very easy just to go into uh, the toolbox and go into um, the models tab. And one of the first things that usually pops up is a sword. Um, you gotta be careful. You gotta choose, um, make sure that it doesn't have any um, bad scripts in there that might be um, back doors for hackers or exploiters. But I've used this tool before, so I know that it's okay. Um, I'm gonna put this into the starter pack so we spawn with the weapon. And now let's go use this sword to test out to see if the respawn logic is working. Ooh, it even has sound effects. Uh, oh, he's chasing. I should kill him. Okay, so I killed the dummy. And moment of truth, 
the yeah it works the enemy npc despawned and then it spawned it took th about three seconds for him to respawn again so if i were to go into the spawner object and i were to change the respawn time to 10 seconds then if i were to kill him it would should take 10 seconds before he respawns again so let's make sure that the code is working as intended and from the looks of it it's definitely waiting 10 seconds and after 10 seconds has happened it respawns you could also set this to zero so then the enemy npc respawns instantly but other than that that's the respawn logic of the npc thank you guys for watching i hope you guys liked this tutorial if you want to see more don't forget to subscribe and comment ideas below I love seeing your guys' uh, requests for ideas for tutorials, so please let me know any other ideas you guys have for this enemy NPC or for other things as well. Stay tuned for more, and I'll see you in the next video. Peace.